Wow, we have 300 subs. Wow, so cool and stuff. Okay, and I have no idea what to do, but show this thing that I made. And it is a realistic combination lock that you might find on lockers or something. I don't know. So basically, we just have, like, this little dial thingy, and then we have this little unlocking thingy. Wow, so cool. And to start it up, we have to get this white block into this location. And I got it really close, so it's going to be really fast. So we're just going to rotate it clockwise twice. So there we go. Now we can start doing our combination. And this is our combination. It is 6, 11, and 14. So that means we have to rotate it clockwise six times, then counterclockwise 11 times, and then clockwise 14 times. And that's going to unlock our locks. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. So that's our first position of our combination lock. And now we're going to rotate it counterclockwise 11 times. And I'm probably going to speed this part up. And finally, our 11th button press. And there we go. Our block is now in the right spot. And now we have to rotate it clockwise 14 times. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to speed up the video again. So we're almost there, just two button presses to go. And then finally, this is our last button press. And if we, lo and behold, wow, it unlocks. That not that so cool? And this lock is very secure. So if you like overshoot it even a little bit, it's going to lock the lock again. So there we go. It just got locked and it's pretty it's gonna be pretty hard for people to guess it because there are three thousand three hundred and seventy five possible combinations on this single sized lock alone and even if you start the lock like over here so if we just like do it completely wrong like I don't know we go clockwise three times so that's one two and three or something I don't know then we go counterclockwise like once and then clockwise twice again yeah, it's not going to do anything. This lock will only unlock if we put in the right combination. And this is our reset button. And our lock is now reset. So now I'm going to show you the redstone. So this is the spaghetti noodly redstone that I made. I wasn't really aiming for neatness or compactness. This is just noodles and I just wanted to get it done. So probably should start with the actual display. So this is just a two-way piston feed tape. And the white block is actually a stair, so it is a transparent block. So that means when we rotate it clockwise all the way to this point, we have a redstone torch under here. And this will be a transparent block, and this repeater will turn off. Turning this torch on, pushing this piston into this spot. So now when we rotate it, it will power through this block into the combination lock system. And even if you go past it, this is a normal piston, so it won't actually retract the block or do anything. So we're all good. So that's basically the tape and how we start it up. So now, once we have our block here, and you know what? I might as well just like walk through it. So I'm just going to push this a few times until we get to that spot. So now the white block is in the starting position. And if we just head around the back, as you can see, this piston extended. But because it's a normal piston, it won't actually retract the block. So now we can actually start the combination. So if we just follow the signal through here, as you can see, we have three pistons over here that get controlled by this hopper counter. And this hopper counter is controlled by switching the directions of the combination lock. So if you switch from clockwise to counterclockwise or counterclockwise to clockwise, this will do one cycle and go to the next piston. So right now it's on the first piston. And if we push this button and then follow the signal again, so we're going to rotate it clockwise once. It's going to go through this block and it's going to go into this signal strength counter. And I just built a mini version over here. This is what it looks like. And if we give it a pulse, then it's going to increase the signal strength by one every time. So now it's two. Now it's three. Now it's four, and to reset it, we just push this button over here, and it resets to zero. So basically, we have three of those. And then, 
over, we carry the signal using these comparators into this little decoder, I guess you could call it. And I also built a mini version over here. So here we have a chest filled with a bunch of items, and this comparator is giving a signal strength of 5, and this comparator is on subtract mode. So that means this has to be on the 6th position to activate this torch. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh, well that's the 6th one. So that's number 6. So now this torch is on, but as soon as we go over, then that torch will turn off again. So that's basically how we decode the signal strength and to control what signal strength we want it to decode, we just put more or less items in that chest. So that's what this is, so let me just go back here. And so that's one, we're gonna give it five more, so one, two, three, four, and five. So now, if we look at our decoder thing over here, as you can see, this torch turns off and this torch tower goes into this. So now this first torch is off and basically all these torches go into the single line. So when all of these torches are off, this line will turn off and it will activate our little unlocking thing over there. So now when we go to the second uh, spot, we have to go counterclockwise. So that's why we have um, this uh, 12 tick delay here because we need to let this cycle to the next thing before the pulse gets through to the signal strength counters. So if we go counterclockwise, there we go, that piston moves into that spot and that just activates, oh, I just broke it. That will activate the second signal strength counter. So it's the same thing. So let's see if I can find it. So let's see, this is our signal strength counter over here and this is our decoder over here. So that is position one and we have to go 11 times. So that's one, two, and three, and four, and nine, and 10, and finally 11. So we're on the 11th spot. So now if we go to this second decoder, this torch turns off because we didn't go over, but you know, if we go over, it'll activate this piece of redstone and turn this on and we don't want that. So now we're on the third position again. Well, not again, we're on the third position. So now we have to cycle to the third spot by switching directions. So we're gonna go clockwise. This will cycle and there we go. And now we can go onto the third spot. So that was once. Now we have to go 13 more times. So two, three, and we're almost there. So 12, 13, and 14. And this is going to power this line and this little contraption over here. Now, I don't think this really needs explaining. It's just this double piston extender and this piston that pushes that. So that's what that looks like if you wanted to know what it does. So that is our combination. So it also has the fail safe. Like I said, if you go over, it will power the... Where is it? Where's the third one? It will power the redstone dust and activate this torch tower and this torch will turn off and lock it again. So now how the reset works, it's this red circuit that goes through the entire thing. So first thing that we have to reset is this. This is basically the RS NOR latch between the switching between clockwise and counterclockwise. So if it's ever left on counterclockwise, we can just push it back here so then it's in the default position. And the second thing we have to reset is this little block pusher over here. So we activate this other piston down here to push this block back over here. So our starting position is reset. And then we have to reset this counter and it's actually resets in a pretty cool way. So if we push the reset button over here and we just quickly fly, this piston retracts and it extended very quickly, but basically what it does is this piston will retract, uh, this line will be unpowered, and all these, all these hoppers will be unlocked, so the item inside will flow freely until it gets to the first spot, 
which will then activate this piston again, locking all of these hoppers. So that's how we reset that. And then, like I said, with this little counter here, basically we power this piece of redstone to reset the counters. So that's what we do. We just have these four tick repeaters down here that go into all of these pieces of redstone that reset those counters. So, yep, yeah, they'll also by default reset all of these because there's no signal strength going into it anymore. And yeah, that's basically the combination lock. Am I going to do a tutorial on this? No, because it's super impractical and you don't really need it and it's really big and I don't know, it's just slow. And before I leave the video, uh, this thing is also expandable, so I don't know, that's, that's a cool thing, I guess. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I don't know, thank you for 300 subscribers and stuff, that's pretty cool. Uh, remember kids, uh, subscribe to PewDiePie, okay, goodbye.